is just fantastic. Captain's Log, Subdates 2106.25.7 I have received word that I am summoned to assist my sister, yes, I have one of those, in moving home, so I've just decided to detonate her old house and replicate her new things instead. I will take my laziness to newer levels in the future. Welcome everyone to the 69th Huequay this week at Twitter, or twat. Today we're going to start with some Americans ruin everything and it's been a while so let's just dust off the old clip and <coughs> For this we need a tweet from Tasty Blue check mark All right How much food is too much food Accompanying this is a 3 minute video It's not a very good video I'm going to criticize it before I even play aspects of the video by saying the following Nothing within this is actually food, and it will go in the same way as it comes out. Colors and all. Textures. The whole shebang. That stuff just slides right through you. It's kind of like McDonald's. I'm pretty sure you could just recycle that and eat it again if you really want to, and it wouldn't taste any different. That video made me feel remarkably sick, and I don't think I'm going to eat for about a week because of it. So to move on from that, we're going to talk about video games. And for this we go to Liberty Hangout. Hot take. Video games are generally stupid and a waste of time, as are most forms of entertainment. Hold on to that one for a second. Pick up a book or go outside. Back in my day we had to get up to even change the channel on the TV. You kids can sacrifice the virtual bloodlust and get some exercise. Many places still have COVID restrictions in place, so exercise is limited. Second, most forms of entertainment you said in the first tweet. A book is a form of entertainment, is it not? Going outside, again, restrictions might reduce that ability. And uh, back in my day, you whippersnappers, you don't know the struggles of first world when I had to change the dial on the television. Shut the fuck up. If you consider video games generally stupid, it tells me you've never actually bothered to play many of the different types. Since you pointed to Bloodlust in the second one, might I recommend you pick up a Nintendo Switch and play one of those um, Animal Crossing games. Stardew Valley, perhaps. Euro Truck Simulator, which I play on a Megon Plays, a channel I have. Linked below. There are many different types of video games to suit many different types of people. Not everything is about violence, you old fuddy-duddy. And they might be considered a waste of time, depending on what your definition of productive is. But that is a subjective position at the best of times. I highly recommend Liberty Hangout. That instead of going outside and sniffing your own farts while in a field of rapeseed, you instead pick up GTA and get yourself a prostitute and have a jolly good time. Or download Ray Shadow Legends. Moving on from that, I'm going to go to Rob Russo, another blue checkmark who I've never heard of. When you realize that air quotes, anti-communist, and air quotes, is just a code word for air quotes, fascist, and air quotes, a lot of previously confusing stuff about the last few decades becomes very clear. Initially, I struggled to understand the tweet, because it was somewhat ironic that you used grammar in some places, but then forgot to for the vast majority of the tweet. It doesn't read very well, okay? My first thought when I saw this, though, was... This just further cements the idea at some point someone is going to say that literally, which is wrong, it's figuratively, everything is fascism, unless you believe what I believe. And I couldn't tell if his tweet was satire or not. At this point, it's impossible to tell. And for the sake of it, to be against communism is not to be a fascist, because you can be against something, and unlike fascism, you don't always have to resort to violence to get your own way. Therefore, you are not a fascist if you are anti-something. There are many other facets to that argument, but it is the most obvious one. I'm sure someone wants to pick it apart and go into more detail. By all means do so. I couldn't care less. Many of you will have heard of the Five Nights at Freddy's game franchise. It is quite interesting. I thoroughly enjoyed the first two, I think, within the series. A lot of fun. If you're a jump scare type, 
yeah, you would have wet yourself. Recently, some information came to light when it came to the creator Scott Cawthon. This would include donations to Donald Trump, Mitch McConnell, and others. Many people then pounced on this as a reason to attack him because of LGBTQ plus issues and then associating it with Trump. This has led to people believing that the reason he announced his retirement from video games and from Five Nights at Freddy's was because of the backlash from that. And this is where people have used the article header to make the point that cancel culture has gone too far. Cancel culture was trending because of this, but it is a tad disingenuous. Because while the timing is a bit coincidental, Cawthon had actually planned on retiring anyway, because he wanted to spend more time at home with his children, something of which he had confirmed in a statement on his personal website. So when the question is asked of whether or not the creator of Five Nights at Freddy's has in fact been cancelled, the answer is no. People are just angry he donated to the people he supported. And he's made his money, now he'd like to spend that money along with his time on his children. Which is a sign of somebody who has their priorities straight. So to our final subject, yes there aren't many this week because I wasn't looking at Twitter much. Don't at me, there is a reason I can't be asked to explain. We're going to go to the thing that actually does handily tie into the number of this episode. Huey huey. For this, we go to a tweet from the New York Post. Manhattan City Council candidate caught with dominatrix in a leaked video. I saw this because of Roaming Millennial, aka Lauren Chen's response of, delete this. And my response was a quote retweet of, so? The city council candidate is called Zach Weiner. Weiner? E I, I'm not entirely sure which. I'm, um, you know, I'm just. No, 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 no. Uh, now, his campaign has been considered tied up because of this um, video of him enjoying a little bit of sadomasochism. I mean, there's nothing really wrong with that, is there? One could make the argument that this falls handily under the bracket of revenge porn because it was anonymously tweeted last week. The video itself was actually flagged to the New York Post by Wiener's own campaign manager. The location for this footage was from the Parthenon studio in Midtown, which is actually known for its high quality BDSM dungeons, or to the non-normie types, dungeons. Wiener has since gone to confirm that this video is in fact him, and that it was taken 18 months ago with a former girlfriend he met during a Halloween party in 2019, with him also declaring that he is very proud of his enjoyment for BDSM activity and quite frankly, I am 100% on his side here. Damn right you accept that. I like this idea that somebody tried to think of this as a, oh, people shooting for high office or offices that are, let's say, in the political sphere have to be the type to go vanilla. It's either missionary or nada. And when you're doing that missionary, neither of you are moving. You're vibrating at a frequency not really associated with our realm. So people who are trying to kink shame, please don't. I do consider this newsworthy though, so I don't agree with Lauren Chen's delete this. But I consider it newsworthy because of the headline it didn't lead with of should we probably look into who the person was that posted this because it is by definition in the area of revenge porn. Oh, and. Dude, I can't show the picture, but he looked like he was having fun. Nothing wrong with that. He has, by the way, put out a statement himself on his Twitter going into it. And honestly, I take no issue. And I'm sure none of you do either. And I do want to know what you think. If you're into BDSM, please let me know what your safety word is. I will change it. As a final thing, I shall be streaming on the Moisky Live channel, a political recap stream, a weekly roundup of politics. It will also be on Spotify, because we have actually moved our show there as well. If interested, please consider swinging by and giving us a follow on Spotify as well. If we don't see you there, have a fantastic Friday and subsequent weekend, and thank you all very much for listening. A whoopah!